guests welcome to my channel pediatrics and life tips in this video i will talk about streptococcal scalded skin syndrome which is also known as richter disease i will start with two cases case number 1 is of a 2 year old boy who presented in the emergency room with fever irritability and a skin rash 4 days after an upper respiratory tract infection On examination the temperature was 103.7 degree Fahrenheit pulse was 100 per minute there is an erythematous rash that involves the face chest back and upper extremities his skin is tender to touch and rubbing the skin causes separation of epidermal layer now questions for you are what is the most likely diagnosis what is the etiology and what is the closest differential Now these are the answers the diagnosis is streptococcal scalded skin syndrome and it is caused by epidermolytic or exfoliative toxin A or B of strain 7155 of age group 2 streptococcus aureus and the closest differential is toxic epidermal necrolysis which is characterized by widespread epidermal necrosis and desquamation after formation of blisters and bullae caused by severe hypersensitivity reaction now case number 2 is a previously well 3 year old boy present to the emergency room with a 3 day history of brightly erythematous rash and a temperature of about 104 degree fahrenheit this acutely tender generalized rash is worse in the flexure and the perioral areas the boy is admitted and over the next day he developed crusting and fissuring around the eyes mouth and nose the discamation shown in the picture occur with gentle traction now mcq for this scenario is which of the following is most likely diagnosis a erythema multiforme b epidermolysis bullosa c dark eruption d streptococcal scalded skin syndrome and e scarlet fever and the correct answer is d that is streptococcal scalded skin syndrome now i will discuss streptococcal scalded skin syndrome in detail i will start with the etiology streptococcal scalded skin syndrome or the richter disease is caused by epidermolytic or exfoliative toxin a or b of phage group 2 streptococcus aureus and particularly of the strain 71 and 55 now the foci of infection is mostly the nasopharynx but it may be amylicus urinary tract superficial abrasion conjunctiva or blood now the clinical manifestation are mediated by hematogenous spread of the toxin in the absence of specific anti toxin antibody in the child now is the pathogenesis the site of blister cleavage is subcorneal the epidermolytic or the exfoliative toxin a or b produces the split by binding to and cleaving desmoglein 1 now the intact bullae in streptococcal scalded skin syndrome they are usually sterile now this condition occur predominantly in infants and young children younger than 5 years of age it is more common in immunosuppressed children epidemics may occur in nurseries which are transmitted by the hands of the medical staff which are in contact with an infected infant however nursery personnel may be the nasal carriers of streptococcus aureus now are the clinical features streptococcal scalded skin syndrome include a range of diseases from localized bullous impetigo to generalized cutaneous involvement with systemic illness onset of rash is preceded by malaise fever irritability and exquisite tenderness of the skin scarletiniform erythema develop diffusely it is accentuated in flexural and peri orificial areas conjunctiva is usually inflamed and can become prurient brightly erythematous skin become wrinkled in severe cases sterile flaccid blisters and erosion may develop diffusely Now, circumoral erythema, radial crusting, and fissuring around the eyes, mouth, and nose is also common in severe cases. Nikolsky sign is positive, that is, areas of epidermis separate in response to gentle shear force. There is pharyngitis, conjunctivitis, and superficial erosion of the lips, but intraoral mucosal surface is mostly spared. Now, the desquamative phase begins after two to five days of cutaneous erythema. large sheets of epidermis peel away 
and moist glistening denuded areas become apparent initially in the flexures and subsequently over much of the body surface now in severe cases complications may occur and these include secondary cutaneous infection cellulitis sepsis pneumonia fluid and electrolyte disturbances now if there are no complications then healing usually occur without scarring in 10 to 14 days Although some patients appear ill, but most are reasonably comfortable except for the marked skin tenderness. Now, the differential diagnoses include toxic epidermal necrolysis, drug eruption, scarlet fever, bullous impetigo, viral exanthemas, epidermolysis bullosa, erythema multiforme, pemphigus vulgaris. Now, I will discuss the diagnosis. Culture specimens should be taken from all suspected sites of localized infection and from the blood to identify the source for the toxin. Now the diagnosis is confirmed by skin biopsy, examination of frozen tissue section or exfoliative cytology. On histopathology, there is subcorneal granular layer split and absence of inflammatory infiltrate. Now I will discuss the treatment. Systemic penicillinase resistant anti staphylococcal antibiotics that is cloxacillin, dicloxacillin or cephalexin or vancomycin plus clindamycin should be started as soon as the clinical diagnosis is made and without waiting for the culture results. Now the skin should be gently moistened and cleans. Apply an emollient this will provide lubrication and reduce discomfort. Corticosteroids are contraindicated in staphylococcal scaltic skin syndrome and topical antibiotics are also unnecessary. Now in severe cases the child should be hospitalized. Fluid and electrolyte management, infection control measures, pain management, meticulous wound care and contact isolation all are very important. Hydrolyzed polymer gel dressings are very useful but minimum number of dressing changes should be done. In severe cases, intensive care unit or burn unit care is required. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel.